changing very fast. The ways that work used to be done may no longer be relevant, and the types of jobs available are increasing the need for continuous development and professional skills. Universities are under pressure to maximize their efforts and capacities to accommodate and cope with current developments, especially in the technology sector. Our guest today is Mr. Hugh Martin, Registrar and Chief Administrative Officer at the British University in Dubai. Hello, Hugh. Hello. Thank you for being with us today. Hugh, what are the main trends that are shaping the higher education? Uh, there are so many trends. I think the ones that are affecting us in international education the most are a change in the economic um, scenario, a difference in the way that students or people who are looking to study want to attend classes and how they want to study, what times of the day. Um, and then there's the whole technological trend around AI, blockchain, uh, online or distance learning. So, I mean, those are the three. I think there's a fourth one, which for me is perhaps the most important, and that's the kind of internationalization of education, higher education particularly. The world is a much smaller place now. Students are looking for international experiences. Universities are increasingly working with partners overseas, and students are moving around a whole global economy. When you look at the world of higher education, whether in the UAE or global, what trends excite you the most, and which scale you the most? Okay, so the, the exciting one is easy for me, and that's partly, I guess, coming from my background. That's the last one I mentioned, which is the internationalization of higher education. Mm -hmm. I've been in HE for almost 25 years now, um, and although a lot of that was based in the UK, I've worked in the United States, I've traveled around the globe with universities, and that's one of the reasons that brought me out to Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited by international higher education, the fact that universities particularly have always been, for a thousand years or more, places where people of any background, any religion, any culture, any gender can get together and explore, research and understand each other. And that for me is the most exciting part, that will only grow. The more frightening part, or maybe frightening is too strong a word, but the areas that worry me, which is perhaps a better word as a registrar, are an increasing reliance on the technology, because I think too much store is set by the kind of rumours you hear that artificial intelligence will take over everything or that everything has to be online, or that um, students can learn on their mobile phone. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a Luddite, I'm not against the machinery that we need, but we need to always remember that the best learning at university happens face-to-face, -face, the way we're working and talking with each other now. AI is fantastic, blockchain is great, but it will only ever support learning. It's not the focus of learning. And the idea that some people say, oh, well, soon we'll all be taught by robots, or you won't need to come to university because you can do it in your room. Maybe technologically that's possible, but I, I wouldn't want it. Having been a lecturer for 15 years, I would never want to teach in that way. I don't think students really want that. They want the convenience of their apps, they want the convenience of their devices, but they still want a lecturer in front of them. They want a tutor they can talk to. They want to come to somewhere where they can sit and talk to other students and share their ideas. And you can't do that in your bedroom with a robot. And in your opinion, what should higher education leaders focus more or pay attention more on how to improve the overall sector? This is a good question because there is a lot of pressure on those of us that run universities to, on the one hand, integrate technology more, on the other hand, work more closely with, say, industries. Uh, and again, I'm not against that. I am nervous around the idea that we are just producing um, uh, graduates who have a career path already mapped out for I was one of the lucky ones. I went to university at the end of the 1980s, early 1990s, when it, you could choose any subject you want to study. Because the idea was, if you had a degree, the world was your oyster. You could go anywhere, you could do anything. I really worry now that as leaders, we're being pushed by very powerful companies, uh, industry, that we must produce more engineers, we must produce more doctors. And, you know, those are important professions, but there are a thousand more professions. And there's a 10,000 more professions that we don't even know about now. So the role of the university is not to create jobs for people or to just push people into industry, even though industry is powerful and, and tells us where we, they think we should do. So for me, the priority for leaders of higher education is to focus on our interdisciplinarity, on our international aspect, and in producing global citizens. That's our role. Let the job market create the workers. How do you think, or in your opinion, how can today's trends 
Okay, so this is where I think the technology does help. So I think this is where you know the, the AI and the other things that we've talked about, it, let's put it really simply, it makes life easier. So in the old days, if I go back to when I started as a, as a professor, I was hand marking essays, you know, with a, a pencil or a pen, 30, 40 scripts on my table. And there was something fun about that, reading people's handwriting, sometimes difficult. Then I moved into a bit more online or distance learning. I was using a computer, I was able to talk to students. I was back based in the UK in the north of Scotland, a very remote, wild area, and my students could be hundreds and hundreds of miles away. Sometimes they lived on islands in places that were inaccessible or couldn't come to class. So I could use the screen, I could use an early form of Skype or you know, a collaborative learning, and that technology was amazing. It opened up the opportunity, and that was in a small part of the UK. Imagine that in, say, rural India or somewhere as big as China, or in remote Africa where the money is not there for students to attend a specific so for me, that's really the exciting part of it, where we can use the technology to improve the student experience. And what does the idea of future higher education look like to you? Uh, the ideal future means that we will have the the ideal ideal future means that we will have more traditional universities. That might sound like an odd thing, but I actually don't think we will go forward to this uh, you know, automated future where there will be robots in the classroom. I actually think students will want to come and actually learn meeting face to face. The ideal university then will be a social place. It will have its role in, in our communities. Universities have been around for thousands of years in different places and parts of the world and they've always given something back. And for me the ideal university will be a centre of learning, a place where research is done independently so government can't influence us, banks can't influence us, industry can't influence us. What we do is independent and we do it for the pursuit of knowledge and then students and people who live around us can benefit from that for me is why we work in universities and I think even if you had a crystal ball and you could look in a hundred years or two hundred years into the future, there would still be a place for that role in the university. How can you align this to your current experience as a registrar and CEO? Mm. That's a good question. Um, it's difficult if I'm honest, we have a lot of pressures on us. Um, all universities, even government universities or privately uh, funded universities have the pressure of money on us. We have to make sure we balance the books. In this particular university, we are not for profit, but we still have to make sure we are um, running courses that students want. We're not doing things which are not relevant. Um, my role as a registrar, particularly, is to ensure that what we call the student experience is put at the beginning and the end of everything. Too often in the past, universities have run for the benefit of their academics and for high rated research, uh, which is important, of course. But the reality of the modern university and the way I've worked, at least for the last um, 10 or so years in senior management has been you put the students at the heart of everything. Because the basic fact, although some people may not like to hear it, is we wouldn't be paid, none of us. We wouldn't have our jobs if we didn't have students. We can't live in an elite world where we just sit and do research. That's for research institutes. The university exists and thrives on its students. So I have to make sure, with all the pressures on me, from the academics, from the administration, from the parents, from the community, from industry and the government, but the student that comes through these doors, whether they're 18 and an undergraduate starting out their university life, or whether they're 40 and they're doing their PhD or their masters and they've got a good job and a family, they get the same wonderful experience of a British education. That, that's the pressure on me. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to conclude my interview by asking you, what do you think is the main or common mission for all universities? So it's something I kind of touched on earlier, and I believe this really strongly. I wouldn't have left, I used to work in business in the private sector, and I wouldn't have left that world to go back to do my Master's and PhD if I didn't believe strongly in the purpose of university. I am really, really strongly of the view that universities have a, a moral and a social relevance to society. There are a lot of pressures now in the world, there are a lot of people who are anti-elite, anti-research, anti-knowledge. You can see that in the rise of extremist governments, USA and in India, in, in Europe, you can see a lot of this extreme views coming out that we don't need, you don't need to go to university, you don't need this, and there's a kind of anti-feeling which is really worrying because for me, uh, the reason why we have universities thousands and thousands of years old, even in the most remote parts of Africa like Timbuktu, all the way through to the Sorbonne or in Paris or Bologna or Oxford and Cambridge in the UK, these have existed for so many centuries because knowledge allows us to understand the world. And the people who have lots of noise and sound around being anti-elite, anti-research, anti-climate change, anti-all the things that we know, that's come from universities. 
We know about climate change because of research. We know about understanding each other's consciousness and religions because of universities. If we get rid of universities, we risk going into a very polarized world where people don't talk to each other anymore. They don't try and understand each other, and they just sit in their own society, and that's very dangerous. So, yeah, I think the role of the university is vital, and we have to defend it. Those who work in universities, all of us, have to defend what we do, because there's a lot of people out there that would like us to disappear. You'll hear them say, oh, we don't need to go to university, just go and get a job. You know, I didn't need to go to university, I got a job straight away. And that's, that's, that's worrying. Thank you for the interesting information, and thank you for being with us today again. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Follow our YouTube channel to watch more episodes.